G'day and welcome back to IC Model Reviews. A package arrived in the mail this morning and it is from Runcam slash SpeedyB, my favourite FPV product supplier in terms of cameras and so forth. Um, what have we got here? Actually, I'll just get rid of the little bits and look at the big one first because this is a bit of an unusual um, look. It is a it's hat, it's handbag, it's, it's a lipo bag. There we go, lipo guard. So I don't know if Runcam are just re just basically using this as a promo bit of swag or whether they're selling them. I guess you could go to the Runcam site and find out, but I'm too lazy. Um, yeah, so it is typically, you know, lipo bag. There you go, fire, fire resistant material. Nothing's fireproof. Um, got some little things in here. Will it take my color coordinated lipos? I'm sure it will. I don't know what the maximum size is, but certainly mini quad, mm, uh, mini quad batteries fall out the bottom. That's a bit of a shame. <laughs> the strap should, should have two straps, but um, yeah, I mean, most people, you don't put them in, you just throw them in. I mean, that's what everyone does. It's fireproof for goodness sake. They bang together and catch on fire, you're safe. So, yeah, I don't know that there's a lot of volume in there for lipos, but uh, that'll be enough. You could fit in a whole day's worth of, or a whole session's worth of mini quad packs in there without any problems. Looks pretty good. Has a carrying handle. Look at that for people who want to be carrying it by the handle. Um, yeah, so uh, what shall I do with this, folks? Uh, I just tend to throw lipos in my backpack and hope it doesn't catch on fire. I don't, haven't used lipo packs, but uh, I'm thinking maybe it's time because, you know, there are so many elements to lipo protection, like this portable lipo protection. Just how fire resistant is this material it's made of? Is the stitching fire resistant? I, I did actually get some lipo bags a few years ago now, and they looked great. And I tried them out, and as soon as the lipo caught on fire, all the stitching burnt out and they just fell apart. I'm sure these won't, but maybe we should try that. For example, this is not going to be fireproof. The handle will melt, I'm pretty sure. So you tell me what you want me to do with this. Shall I give it a good test, throw an old six cell pack in there and just pump it full of electrons until she bursts? Make a spectacular video, I suppose. But um, yeah, it's it's most people get these bags and just assume, hey, it's a lipo bag. I put my lipos in there, I'm safe. Well, it's, it's not really true because when a lipo goes, it, it vents a lot of gas, usually hydrogen gas, it gas it, uh, ignites. And the, and the flames have to go somewhere. This won't stop the flames, it'll just direct them. So the way the bag is constructed is quite important because the hot gases have to come out somewhere. So where will they come out? And when they come out, how far will they go? Um, I know a lot of people use things like ammo boxes. And um, if you use an ammo box, they say, oh, it's right, drill a couple of holes. But have you seen what happens when a lipo goes off in an ammo box with a couple of holes? The flames shoot out many, many feet. Or if you're in Europe, many meters. Um, they really do, the, the, the holes just direct the flames. So if you put your ammo box next to a flammable object and one of the lipos goes up, boom. And the other thing about lipo bags is if you put all your lipos in one bag and just one of them goes off, then they're all gonna go off. So is it really a good idea? Should lipo bags have actual, not just an open box like that, but have compartments which are all sort of insulated from each other so that hopefully if one goes off, it's going to delay the others going off until you've maybe got time to throw it out the window or something. I don't know. I think lipo bag design is something that's been overlooked. Considering how dangerous these things can be, I think it's time perhaps someone paid a lot of attention. Anyway, as I say, I don't know whether Runcam are selling these or whether this is a bit of swag for the new year or something. I don't know. They didn't tell me in the letter, but there we go. Tell me what you want me to do with this. Destructive testing, is that a thing for you guys? If it is, happy to oblige. Right. What else was in that box? Um, Speedy B, this is one of the Runcam brands and it's usually their flight controllers, their video transmitters, that sort of things. Um, what is it? It is an F7 all-in-one flight controller. Brand Speedy B model TX600. When I saw that, I thought, oh, maybe it's got a video transmitter on it. TX600 milliwatts, who knows? Um, and it is the, it has the three to six cell LiPo power. And it's got obviously got an F7 on it. Let's have a look inside. I have only just had a quick glance. I haven't actually instructions follow the QR code. It's not conformal coated and I actually like, most people like conformal coated stuff but this one you wouldn't want to conformal coat it for obvious reasons. Let's pull in a bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Right if we look at this you can see there are lots of little pads around the edges there where you can solder wires to. They're not holes through the board to solder to and if you're going to have something that needs to be soldered to conformal coating is actually a pain in the backside because if there's conformal coating over the pads you can't solder to them. You got to scratch away with a knife and it really starts looking kind of awful, kind of quick. And given that there are so many pads around here for all the different options, if you conformal coated it, you'd have to have a little um, coating mask made up and things. Yeah, just it's probably not going to be much use. Um, 
build it, coat it yourself, conformal coat it yourself. If you want to know more about conformal coating and what products you can use for it, I might do a video on that because I, over the many years in electronics, I found one product that does a really good job of conformal coating and it's super cheap and it's super easy. And the big bonus is that if you use this product, you can actually solder through it. So that's a secret. I might give you that in the new year. If you want to know, put a comment in the comments and I'll do my best to tell you. So what do we got here? Just a quick look. It's got lots of smoothing caps. That's pretty good. Do I see a barometer? Let me have a look. I just take it out of shot because I don't have my glasses on. And oh, I'm going to have to get my granny glasses. Uh, don't you hate it getting old? I'm having to use these things all the damn time now. Uh, here we go. Again, out of shot. I may do a jump cut if I can't. Um, oh, yeah, barometer. I see a barometer. Let me move this back into shot. Uh, this little thing here with the hole, that's a barometer. So it's got a barometer. It's You could use this in fixed wing if you wanted to. You wanted to use INAV or something like that. Um, but obviously, uh, mini quads are the going to be the most obvious use for it. We've got power in, we've got a nice beefy shunt, we've got ESC connections along the side, we've got all these other things, obviously got an OSD, and USB, lots and lots of connectors down there, so it is going to be quite versatile, I think, it'd be quite a versatile little flight controller, and I haven't looked anywhere else, haven't looked at the instructions, I'm just guessing a lot of the stuff, let me open the little box that comes underneath, all this packaging is super... <laughs> Interesting, here we go. So here's what you get with it. Let me just pull out a bit so you can see, otherwise you won't know. Here we go. Let me move this other stuff out of the way. So I'm not, I'm not unboxing this, I'm just opening the box. Um, you get an XD60. Here you go. Hmm. Uh, and we get some little anti-vibration mounts, some little insulating, you know, um, physical insulation mounts. And a little cable there that plugs into the little connector there. So yeah, everything you need. Um, so there's no video transmitter, obviously. Um, so I don't know why they call it a TX600. I guess they're going to call it something, and that's what they decided. Um, so I'll put this back, otherwise I will lose everything. I'm terrible if I take it out of the box. I will lose it. So it's not an unboxing, because it's still in the box. How's that? Oh, no, I can't get the lid down now. Anyway, so that was that's interesting. I, You'll see what I'm going to do with this in a moment, because this spurred me on to do something I should have done a long time ago. But let's move on to the next box they sent us get on there which is this one this is one of their typical camera boxes what does it say on the end it is the uh, racer model that the run cam racer have i looked at a racer before i don't know if i have or not let's open it up there we go again we're just going to look in the box not going to unbox it racer. and it is yeah i think i have didn't i have one of these um a while ago the little racer it's not the nano it's the racer it's a oh, oh man come out of there here we go so it is it's not a nano size it's a it's a mini size and hey looks okay um we'll try it out i've had just the project for this as i said i've got an idea where i'm going to put this and i'll show you in a moment put the lid back on yay all the pieces will remain and the final thing we got here is the nano racer 2 now i had the nano racer this exposure is terrible on my camera I should change that. Hang on. Hopefully that's a little better, not too blown out on the box. It probably still is. I don't care. Um, yeah, Run Cam Racer Nano 2. Let's have a look. Plastic box. What does it say on the back? It says Racer. 5 volts to 36 volts. Wide dynamic range camera. 1.8mm lens. 160 degree field of view. So I did have a look at the original. Uh, they sent me some prototype stuff actually on the little. Oh, yeah, this is, yeah, sweet. That is a very small. Now for your sub 250 builds, what else are you going to use but one of these? Fantastic. And speaking of sub 250, more news on that coming up um, fairly soon. But um, put it up that way. So there we go. We got three interesting products from the people at Runcam, aka Speedy B. No, we got four. I forgot about the lipo bag. Anyway, um, so as I was saying, I've got something in mind for this. What have I got in mind? Well, that. This is the, <laughs> the quad frame they sent me uh, some time ago, and I haven't had a chance to put it together. I know RC Shim got one. He built his. Seems to fly really well. But hey, um, I was actually just um, waiting for a flight controller and things. Well, hey, they've got a flight controller now. And it's pretty. It's a 30. These are a 30, whatever, 31 mil stack. It'd be nice if they were a 20 mil stack. Everyone's going 20 mils. A 20 mil stack would be really nice because then I would actually use the run cam hybrid but because the run cam hybrid boards a 20 mil stack and it doesn't fit on a 30 mil stack it's like oh get your act together boys um anyway so uh, over the next few days i'll endeavor to build this up and see how it goes but i think um while i'm here i should mention speaking especially with these two cameras here especially the nano 250 grams now if you've 
If you haven't seen it, go to my Xtech channel. I'll link it in the description. A video I've done on the new rule changes coming up in the USA, or proposed rule changes. They're not cast in stone yet. However, I think they are a fait accompli, which is French for um, bacon sandwich. But I think this is what's going to happen. Uh, basically, they're going to move everybody into a tiny little field in the middle of nowhere where you can fly circles. And for people who build quad stuff, well, that's not such a good thing. No more bandos, no more freestyling amongst the trees. Sorry, guys, you've got to fly over a grassy paddock at your AMA field. That's not going to be good. So go and have a look at that video. I'm coming up with strategies at the moment that hopefully we can use to try and stop this draconian and highly punitive regulation coming into effect in the USA. Otherwise, it does spell the end of the hobby for everything except sub 250. Sub 250 is getting really good now. You can do a lot of stuff with sub 250, but the real risk is that once they've pushed everyone down to sub 250, then they'll turn around and just ban that as well. Because they'll say, oh, it's too capable now. These sub 250 craft have got wonderful cameras and they can fly long distances and they can fly really fast. So we're going to ban them just like we did with the bigger ones. Ah, oh, no. So anyway, go to XJet. If you're not a subscriber to XJet, subscribe because that's where I put my sort of news about regulations and rules and anything that sort of affects the hobby um, that isn't in the review category. So yeah, you need to be a subscriber to that channel as well. Right, so there we go. That was interesting stuff, wasn't it, that arrived today and I will be putting it to good use in the next couple of days. And also a lot more focus on Sub 250 for the obvious reasons. And you'll notice these batteries are colour coordinated ones, China Hobby Line. Bloody marvellous. I'm really liking these batteries. Uh, I've done a video up, I did a video up a couple of months ago actually, because I've had these batteries for maybe three months now. And I didn't want to rush out and say, oh, these are great batteries, because you know what it's like. You get something, especially with batteries, they work great for about 10 charges and then the bum falls out of them. Well, these are holding up so damn good. I am super impressed. Um, so anyway, I'll give you more info in a video coming up on these China Hobby Line batteries, my observations, my experiences, and the good and the bad. So there you go. Stay tuned for that one. Um, there we go. Thank you, Runcam. Thank you, Speedy B. I shall be getting those in the air fairly shortly. And again, if you watch this channel, the RC Model Reviews channel, be aware that a lot of the products that I review here, I go on to fly on my XJet channel. So you can keep an eye on how things are going. You know, um, if I have a product and I, I like it, then I'll keep flying it and you'll see whether it eventually fails or whatever. So yeah, that's it. That's it for another video. In-depth reviews of these um, fairly shortly when I've got the whole damn thing together. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.